is doing in this hour and this time. I know there's a lot going on in this world, and I appreciate everything that we're understanding and learning here in the church. The pastor, well, he's, he's just awesome, folks. Amen. I'll just say it like that. He is awesome. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. I appreciate him and all that he does, and sometimes I wonder why he wants me to come in and preach the word when he's doing such an awesome job. There was a pastor out in West Texas a long time ago he used to invite pastors and people in to preach. And after they preach, they go home, and then the pastor get up the next week, and he says, now you know why you're happy to see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I feel sometimes with our pastor, folks. Amen. Praise God. But if you got your Bibles, we're going to turn to Psalms 138. Psalms 138. Amen. Verse number 6. Though the Lord be nigh, high, though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. Aren't you glad he has respect to the lowly? Amen. Amen. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Anybody walking in the midst of trouble? Amen. Thou will revive me. Amen. Ooh. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies and thy right hand shall save me. I'm kind of gearing in on thou wilt revive me. Somebody say that. Thou wilt revive me. Praise God. Lord, we ask you to come into this place and revive our spirits right now. We need revival, Lord. We need to revive our thoughts, our minds. We need to renew it, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask you to move in and do what needs to be done here in this sanctuary right now. And we ask you to touch each and every one here. And Lord, touch these lips that my words will be theirs, Lord. And we ask you to touch each and every one in Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. I read a letter of appeal sent by a leader of a messianic lodge to his fellow members, and he said this, We are Masons. We as Masons are the heart of the Masonry, and we are the ones that can keep it going. We are the revival. We are the revival. I'm not here to advocate for the Masons. I can tell you that right now. In fact, uh, I was invited to join the Masons uh, a long time ago, and you're not supposed to be that. You're, the, you're supposed to go ask one of the members to join. But somebody invited me to join them, but I had nothing to do with them because of their secrecy. If an organization claims to be the uh, 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 claims the Bible is the center of their belief, why the secrecy? Anybody who's been a Mason in here, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I don't I don't believe in them. Can't be there. They're traced all the way back to the Tower of Babel. <laughs> Whew, look out! I'm not here to talk about them. But I do want to gear in on the part where he says, we are the revival. In fact, I've named this message, we are the revival. Hallelujah. A similar statement, one made by a, 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 a growing, the growing church in England many years ago was this. We shouldn't ask God to send a revival. Instead, we need to realize that we are the revival that God has sent. Everyone... Please say these words with me. We are, we are the revival. Come on, we are the revival. We are the revival. Oh, hallelujah. We are the revival. We are, we are the the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines revival as an act of instance of, renew, of receiving, 
the state of being re, re, uh, revived, uh, such as renewed attention to or interest in something, a new presentation or publication of something old, a period of renewed religious interest, uh, is often uh, and often highly emotional ev uh, evangelistic meetings or, or a series of meetings. Amen. Restoration of force, uh, validity, or the effect uh, uh, as to the context. In our scripture text, uh, we read we read in there about uh, 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 revive. Amen. Amen. We read this in, in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, um, Old Testament, 2421. The number defines revive as this. It's, everybody say, ka, y'all. Ka, y'all. It's, 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 it's Hebrew. Don't, don't look at me like that. <laughs> it's from the Old Testament, so it's in Hebrew. Amen. <laughs> we, we love the Hebrew words, folks. Amen. What well, means to live, whether literally or figuratively, causative or to receive. Amen. Or revive, not, not, not receive, revive. Amen. Uh, in the King James, it means to keep, leave, must, or make, alive, certain, uh, uh, give promise, life, let, suffer, to, live, nourish, up, Preserve, alive, quicken, recover, repair, restore to life, to revive, revive and, to, and God to save alive the life, lives, surely to be whole. Now, don't we love all of those words? Amen. The word revival is not found in Scripture. All right, y'all being quiet. I'm just trying to bring you some facts here before I get into it, Okay. But the word revive is found in a number of times within the scripture. Revival is the noun form of revive. Amen. It, 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 revival is a visitation of God that awakens the sleeping. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Revival is an inrush of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Revival is a season of refreshing. Revival is a drenching, a showering presence of God. Somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we feel like the lack of spiritual power, we need revival. That's right. Come on now. When we lose our concern for our souls, we need a revival. Hallelujah. When we find ourselves drifting away from church services, we need revival. When we're, our, when we're lovers of money and pleasure more than lovers of God, we need revival. Hallelujah. When we can bicker and, and sow discord more than worship and rejoice, we need revival. When we find it easier to criticize and condemn than to pray, we need revival. Hallelujah. When we don't see the baptistry filled with repentant sinners, we need revival. Revival. Somebody say we need revival. We are the revival. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When our hearts are cold. <sighs> Come on now. Come on. There's times that, 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 that we get this feeling like uh, uh, I, I, we even talk about it in Sunday school. Sometimes, you know, am I just going through the motions, basically what it comes down to. Am I just going through the motions when I'm coming to church? Hallelujah. Oh, oh hallelujah. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think about it. When I think of these things here, I'm sitting here saying we need revival. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we don't see the altars filled with hungry people, we need revival. These altars were made for the saints, folks. It wasn't made for the sinners to come in off the streets. It's made for us to come down and get ourselves right with God. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. There's not a church here in Temple that does not need revival. There's not a church in this organization that does not need revival. Hallelujah. We need a genuine revival. Whew. Let me say, there's not one family, there's not one person that don't need revival in their life. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. In fact, is, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul said, said this to Timothy one time. He said, you remember, you remember your, your mother and your grandmother and all this other stuff? What, what are you saying? Well, remember what they taught you. Build up and stir up that that's within you. Hallelujah. And sometimes what we need is we need a stirring in our soul. Hallelujah. 
Revive us. Come on, say, revive us, O Lord. Now make it personal. Revive me, O Lord. Oh, come on, revive me, O Lord. Woo, we ought to cry that very loud and very strong. Revival is not found where people are stirred, but when they are changed. Sometimes we sit there and say, well, he put some giddy up in my step here. Hallelujah. That's not revival. When he stirs me up and gets me changed, that's when it's revival. You see, revival is not found where people want to be told like it is, but like it isn't. Uh oh. Mm -mm. What, what, what are you saying, Brother Samuels? Revival is not found where we want the blessing without the obedience. Somebody say obedience. obedience. It's better to sac be obedient than sacrifice? Come on now. You know, Noah did not build an ark preaching something good is about to happen. <laughs> Come on, he didn't build that ark saying things like that. Amos did not fight Israel's high priest because he preached confession is profession. Come on now. Or, you see, Jeremiah wasn't in the pit for preaching, I'm okay, you're okay. <laughs> Daniel wasn't in the lion's den for saying, positive thinking moves mountains. John the Baptist was not executed for shouting, smile, God loves you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Each of these men preached repent. We need to live a repented life. Hallelujah. Our problem is that sometimes we get so wrapped up in other things we fail to repent. It ought to be a daily thing. Hallelujah. That's the renewing and the regeneration of our mind. Hallelujah. Revival can be found in the midst of repentance. Hallelujah. Revival is found in the midst of sacrifice. It's found in the midst of challenge. It's found in the midst of reaching and winning the lost. It's found in the midst of tremendous travail. Sometimes we just need to travail into God asking for... <laughs> Oh, God, save us, Lord. Save our family, Lord. Save our friends, Lord. Save those around us, Lord. Save my church members, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! People that hunger and thirst after God in enthusiastry, that's when they moved. God moves in mysterious ways. Let me tell you this, whether you want to believe this or not. Revival rarely stirs the masses. Whoo! That isn't the way I've been taught. <laughs> it's supposed to remove everybody. It is supposed to move everybody, but it, you know, it's not always. What are you saying? Mm -hmm. It starts with an individual. What are you saying? Abraham says, here am I. Isaac says, here am I. <laughs> Jacob says, here am I. Joseph says, here am I. Moses says, here am I. Samuel says, here am I. Isaiah says, here am I. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know about you, but I want to stand up someday and I'm going to say, Lord, here am I. We are the revival. We read of a citywide revival in Samaria. It all began with one man, Philip. Not Philip the apostle, Philip the table waiter who took the message to the Samaritans. Amen. A revival of one. A revival, com, uh, com, uh, I guess, comprised of one person running for his life. Yet while running, he took the time to spread the gospel. Revival begins with the individual. It only takes one match to start a fire. It only takes one to begin a revival. In the 1800s, Gypsy Smith was such a man. He once asked how, how, how to have a revival, and he said it like this. Go home. Lock yourself in the room. Mm. 
draw a circle around yourself with chalk and ask God to start a great revival within that circle. Ooh, hallelujah. When God has answered your prayer, the revival will be underway. Listen to this paradox. I can pray for you, but I cannot pray for you. Did you get that? I can pray for you, but I cannot pray for you. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Only you can achieve a breakthrough with God. Amen. Only you can continue praying until the revival comes. What, what, what are you saying? Well, we know the results. We read it in the Bible. The Samaritans believed. They confessed. They were baptized in Jesus' name. They saw miracles. They saw devils cast out. They had, a tremendous, had tremendous healings. Then Peter and John came and finished the message, laying hands on them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But this time, the one who had started it started this revival was elsewhere. In fact is, he was in the de desert running along besides a chariot <laughs> witnessing to an Ethiopian. Hallelujah. You know, see, it only takes one to start a revival. Whew. My question today is simply this. What do you want to see God do? What do you want to see God do? Pastor and I want to see him fill this house. Oh, not to, not, not to make him and I feel like we're something. It's just that we want somebody to come in and praise God. Hallelujah. Do you want to see our kids saved? Mm. Do you want to see our family one to the Lord? Do you want God to, more miraculous, be, to move more miraculously in our midst? My, my, my. It begins with one person. Somebody say one person. One person, one person can spark a revival that will not stop. What are you saying? Well, we've been talking about Asbury. And the president of a Bible Institute stopped it. But it hasn't quit. It's still going on elsewhere. My question is, is why isn't it going on here? Ooh, look out. Did he say that? I read a story of D.O. Moody in London. His message started a revival that spread throughout the British Isles. It went in like this, and most of it was just quiet, kind of like it is right now. Didn't seem like anybody was being moved and nothing was going on. And he dreaded returning for the evening service. Sometimes pastors get that way and ministers get that way. They, were, they dread going to the next service because it seemed like the point went here and dropped straight down. Whew. When he got back that night, the place was packed and electrified. He's baffled. He doesn't understand what's going on. But he discovered within the church there was an elderly woman who looked after her invalid sister. <laughs> when the woman returned home from church that morning, the shut-in sister wanted to know all about the service. And the shut-in started listening. And, and, she, and so the sister repeated the message that was given by uh, uh, Moody that, that day that he preached. And her invalid sister said, put that lunch away. We must pray and fast for the service this evening. God's about to do something. Anticipation. Hallelujah. Woo. Two old ladies. Hallelujah. Don't you, ever, don't you ever think that these old ladies don't have a way of getting to God. 
I'm going to tell you right now, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, God has a way of just listening to them. because. But what we need is the power of God resting on the house. Hallelujah. They didn't want, they, they, they were in one bedroom, and they said we didn't need more programs. We don't need any activities. We don't need any kind of organization. What we need is the power of God in the house. So they turned away the food preparation and got down and started praying. Revive us, oh Lord. Woo. Revive us, oh Lord. Oh. We are the revival, Lord. Revive us, oh Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh. What are you saying, Brother Samuels? Woo. Teens are brought to life. By life-changing experiences, I need revival. Thieves made honest, I need revival. Marriages are restored, I need revival. Liars become truthful, I need revival. Drug addicts, drug addicts are healed. I need revival. Hallelujah. Alcoholism is cured. I need revival. Hallelujah. Hmm. Fathers returning home and being the man they need to be. I need revival. Mothers raising up and becoming prayer warriors. I need revival. Only one. Just one. One has great power. Me and God is a majority. I said me and God is a majority. Peter and John went to the temple. They told the layman, look on us. We don't have silver and gold, but we got the answer. I say we got the answer. We're God's revival sent to you. I didn't come here today to give you an inspirational speech. I didn't come to make you leave feeling better. I didn't come to see revival break out on the entire crowd. It don't work that way. I came to see revival get a hold of you. And for you to get a hold of the fact that you are the revival in our world. Mm. Where are you going, Brother Samuels? Quit praying for revival. Be revived. Well, you didn't get that. I said, quit praying for revival. Be ye revived. Quit saying, God, send someone else. You go. Get rid of the Moses mindset. Oh, Lord, I'm here, but send my brother Aaron. You may ask, why doesn't somebody else do this? Perhaps God is speaking to you. Maybe you're that someone. We are the revival. Let me say it again. We are the revival. Would you stand? God is calling all of us today. But there's one here that needed to hear this. He's calling you to step forward and say, we are the revival. Mm. Paul Harvey did a thing way back when talking about if I were the devil. If I were the devil, I'd get everyone to pray for revival. So they'd be too distracted to make any disciples. God's looking for a vessel through which He can pour out His Spirit 
on an entire city. Question, are you that person? I think you are. That's why I brought this message. Who would like to step forward and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I, Lord. Here am I. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the revival. Let me say it again. We are the revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, that's it. Find a place to pray right now. Let's take a few moments. Talk to the Lord about your heart. Where is your heart today? Your heart belongs to God. Say, Lord, I love you with all my heart, with all my soul. Oh, it's time to give it to the Lord today. Give your heart completely to Him and don't hold anything back. Come on, it's time to reach out and touch the Lord right now. Reach out and touch Him. Oh, He's walking up and down the aisles of this church, and He wants to touch you today. Give Him your burdens. Cast your burden upon the Lord. He will sustain you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God.